Chainsaw Man is simple. Simple doesn't mean shallow, mind you. Chainsaw Man is a joyride of a manga. I rarely read manga. In fact, this is my first manga video. But even if an amateur like me finds it interesting beyond just good writings or artworks, you know it is hitting some good spots. It is such an easy read as well. I'm a slow reader, you see. The type that smells the roses a little bit too hard. Even then, Chainsaw Man's energy was able to propel me forward so effortlessly that I can't stop but to think. There must be several ingenuities driving behind it. I have never finished a manga this quickly before, so it was a refreshing experience. And so, after putting in some thoughts and examining closer, I have come to describe the manga as simplicity at its best. It is speedy. Expositions for the most part are kept thin, cutting to the chase. But nonetheless, it always captures the rudimentaries of what makes shonen manga shine, using minimal effort, really. And the result is quite sublime. It is condensed more than it is distilled, hitting the notes properly but not skimping the taste for the sake of speed. And that taste is certainly not some run-of-the-mill jam on bread could offer. Before we discuss further, spoilers warning for the entire part 1 of the manga. And to allow me to keep making videos, please consider subscribing to the channel to support me. A simple gesture, but it helps a ton. Oh boy, the pun is starting already. Touted as a not jump like jump manga, I, not an avid jump reader myself, respectfully disagree with that sentiment. Sure, it has a lot more dark and gore presented up front and center than other prominent jump titles people tend to associate with the shonen genre. But Chainsaw Man nonetheless plays right into the tropes generally exhibited from its peers. And by Fujimoto Sensei's words regarding to that image, he himself reassures that attempts were indeed made to align the manga as a jump like title. However, I understand there are standout distinctions in Chainsaw Man that gives off that outlier vibe. And to me, those distinctions are what captivated me with the series. And no, don't give me that deconstruction both. Chainsaw Man plays into shonen, straight, quick, and clean. In short, simple. How simple? Just to name a few examples, Denji is the rock-headed, simple-minded prototype amped up to the max, established by a hardened yet simple backstory. Fight first, talk later. Gets beat up, stand back up. Immortal protagonist, not even trying to hide it. Unapologetically loud, and you can count on him to clutch it out when it matters too. A straight-laced counterpart, Aki, who even ended up becoming a rampaging fiend and fights the protagonist. The power concepts are apparent, boils down to easily understood relatives yet effectively awesome. Abilities were void from any convoluted explanations. One sentence and it is done. Devil Hunter as a profession is as literal as it sounds, and there's even a civilian branch, a simple stroke that establishes the world well without much needed explanations. The suspension of mystery powers that pick and hold onto your interest, the good old moral decisions our mains inevitably have to face, the devils are literally one to one by name of figures in Abrahamic mythology, spelling out a direct connection blatantly. Discovering of new techniques is babbled out by a shark guy who speaks non-grammatically. That is so funny. Have I mentioned Chainsaw Man is also humorous? Yeah, it knows how to crack some jokes. Simple character designs that are cosplay friendly. Hero's motivations as simple as touching boobs or the usual revenge. Simple solution to a complicated situation. And even the simplicity of the paneling, which is the star of the manga in my humble opinion. And I will explore that more in depth later in the video. Suffice to say, these elements are not exclusive to shonen, but still, Chainsaw Man shares a lot of them with its contemporaries, while being subversive against audiences' expectations refreshingly. If One Punch Man's punchline is the inevitable full stop of an elaborated sentence, then Chainsaw Man is breaking those compounds to short sentences, like those English homework we did back in school. Beat bad guy, lose to bad guy. Enters training arc, try again. How much equals how strong? Explain power, use power. Plot twist, plot twist, plot twist, and scene. That is how it feels to binge this manga in one fell swoop. 
Yet, this simplicity seeping out from every angle is not a detriment to the punch they build in Chainsaw Man. For example, the first shocker, I would argue, is the introduction of Gun Devil and its massacre, was able to pack such a punch due to that simplicity of an explanation. How many seconds, how many gets killed. Pure visceral in display. It is so vicious that they don't bother showing you the details how the massacre was done until a later climax. But that's brilliant because it subsequently builds anticipation and fear for the audience by obscuring the details. I have to attribute the experience to the paneling works of the manga. I noticed that one thing Fujimoto Sensei loves to do in his works is showing the emotional switches of characters using several portraits panel in a row. It seems to me that he wants his characters to act, and him capturing these subtle facial expressions in the moment. And with this quirk, we can see that he wouldn't mind adding a few more blocks cluttering up the page just to properly deliver this internal swaying of emotions. Simple rectangles and square panels are used heavily and in denser capacity. Diagonal ones see little use in downtime, and carefully differentiating their sizes and spaces for speedy reading works almost eerily well. As mentioned in the beginning, I realized how the dialogues in Chainsaw Man are unusually shorter too which adds onto the ease of reading, aside from a few instances like the whole training with Kishibe, which stuck out sore because of how apparently wordy it is compared to everything else up until that point. But then again, it only took like 2 fights and the training is done, which still adhere to the speediness of the entire manga. The art is rough, gruffy, and gritty, which adds onto the dirty, quick pace, but somehow manages to display clarity. Contrasting elements with the color of black and white never left Fujimoto's mind. There's also lesser gradient or high detail backgrounds. Pages are very often backed by solid black and white, even outside of internal monologue sequences. Very minimal use of tiny panels that overlaps other panels as well, which again easy on the eye, dispelling any chances for the reader to second guess what's happening. Obstructions be damned. While these elements may be the product of the tight schedules associated with a weekly serialized manga, I think they ultimately ends up in favor for the aesthetic of Chainsaw Man. I want to stretch again that I've always been a slow reader, so I was dumbfounded by how quickly and willingly I ended up flipping through the pages. Coupled with an intriguing plot that keeps me wanting to find out what happens next, this manga propels me forward like I'm controlled by the devil herself. I feel like I was being eaten in by it, more than I'm the one consuming the manga. It is no exaggeration to say they are working efficiently in a subconscious level. And on some levels, that's what good paneling are striving to achieve. Whatever halts you are the loud plot points, the shocking turn of events, and bombastic scenes. Pages that drop your jaw. And I got an epiphany halfway in. Is this the point of the simplicity in this play? Speaking of impactful pages, let's gush about them. The exciting stuffs. This is where the simplicity of everything pays off. I believe everyone would want me to start off with this page. Ah yes, the astronaut page, let's call it that. Although, this isn't even my favorite page. Now don't get me wrong, this page is striking for sure. This is the page that got circulated online a bunch, and presumably the gateway for a lot of people picking interest to the manga. I for sure is one of them. It is even more impressive with context. I suppose these are astronauts who got flung away into deep space due to unfortunate circumstances. Their hands clasping together, which paints a picture they were praying in hope within pure darkness, wishing to be saved. The fears they felt within that hopelessness fills the darkness devil to the brim. These heroes of humanity helplessly fear it. Great page, great page for real. But my personal favorite is a pair of pages that goes, pun intended, hand in hand together. And that is page 42 and 43 of chapter 63. Oh boy, this pair of pages took my breath away, and I think they will stay in my head for a long long time to come. Hell, if you mention Chainsaw Man in front of me, my mind will be jumping to these two pages by default. 
and also Makima. A massive hand with six fingers approaching down from clear sky, as if it is going to snatch a piece of reality away. Followed by another shot, the hand now grasping together on soil but broken. It signals the disjoint from the real world into hell, telling no escape. A surreal godly hand descending from above heaven's sky to just a lump of meat on hell's floor. In between these two pieces is a gap, a perpetual movement they did not convey but was animated in your head. It took away my breath for a few seconds and I wonder if within those seconds had my life been taken away for a brief moment and brought to hell along with the characters as well. I have imagined in my head several ways how will these two pages be made in the anime. I hope they do not disappoint. I think the impact of these fantastic moments will not achieve such memorability if not for the simplicity the series adhere to all this while. The simplistic paneling practiced throughout the manga felt like it was all set up to further contrast against these clever, fourth wall breaking, reinventive marvels throughout the series. The sudden flip of using more detailed backgrounds, lines and drawings marked these occasions with a surreal feel. And in these few chapters, they went ham. You have Santa getting fed on a piece of darkness by a hand coming from outside of the frame that is also connected to the panel itself. The dismembered hands of the devil hunters menacingly frame their own disbelieved reactions. And later on, the Hello Halloween page that is an entire hard-covered book and you are reading from the spine now? In my humble opinion, these pages define Fujimoto Sensei's ability to composite extremely memorable drawings using manga as a medium. And I can't help but to think the simplicity of everything we have discussed is yet another subtle trick he prepared all along, conditioning the readers to finally give us big surprising slaps in the face and want us to remember this is a simple manga not simply made. With all that said, of course the climax of the entire part 1 of Chainsaw Man retains the spirit of simple. At the final confrontation, Denji bangs on one answer to decide whether he would kill Makima or not, despite loving her genuinely. In this perfect world you are making, will there still be crappy movies? To which Makima replied, the world will be better if there's no bad movies. Art is subjective and having such a clear-cut ideology of what's good and bad is extreme. Makima exerted too much of her ideals to this world and disregarded everyone else's. She knows what's best for others but only from her own point of view. To her, black and white is separated like oil and water. Just like how Denji suspected, she did not even bother recognizing her subordinates' faces but registers them only by their sense. In her eyes, nobody is worthy. In her eyes, there is nobody. Ultimately, Makima wanted everything for herself. Everything must comply to her to conform her within her control. And so, Chainsaw Man revs up to kill a bleak future where no grey areas are allowed. A simple resolution presented as a simple question, asked by a simple man and yet universal. If it isn't obvious enough by now, the simplicity I frame upon Chainsaw Man is in absolute no way meant as an insult or saying the manga is shallow or normal, lack of depth, no. There's a point in that simplicity. It is functional, thoughtful, it even has subtleties, and at the correct time, accentuates the complexity it helps build upon. As a manga constructed to be binged so easily, everything still managed to tie together so well and wholly even in the details. To be able to do so much with so little. Let me sum up Chainsaw Man with a simple sentence. Chainsaw Man is simply masterful. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. First time tackling a manga video and I hope it is worthwhile for you. 
I know Chainsaw Man is a beloved manga, and I hope I've done it justice. If you have enjoyed anything you just saw at all, please support me by subscribing to the channel Moon Anime. I could really use the help, and sharing the video around helps a ton. Gotta say, I've put quite a decent amount of time on this one. It accidentally became my biggest project yet, and it spiraled way beyond how much work I thought was needed to make everything together. So I wish it can get a few more eyes. Taskadu. If you want more content right away, check my backlog out and pick your fancy. Follow me on Twitter at MoonAnime9 for the funnies. And come join my Discord for some uh, cultural exchange of anime, manga, and games. Every link's down in the description. I hope this finds you well, and long live the chainsaw. I'll see you from the moon.